Hello, my dears. Like my mining hat? It's what you wear when you're mining for minerals. And that's what we're discussing today, minerals. <laughs> we're picking up where we left off last week. In the last video, I presented the vitamins for menopause. And in this video, I'll present the minerals for menopause. And in the next video, I'll present dietary supplements for menopause. This material is sprinkled throughout my book in conjunction with the subject matter to which each mineral pertains. But I thought it would be good to kind of consolidate it all in one video for you. If you're all about vitamins and minerals and want to use them to manage your menopause, either exclusively or with other options, you need to watch this video. Not only will you get the facts on all the pertinent minerals in one single video, you'll also learn about some of the misconceptions that are held by nearly all women. Just as I did in the last video on vitamins, I'll go through the minerals alphabetically and designate which ones has specific benefits for managing menopause. So let's just get started. First, we have boron. It's first because it begins with a B, <laughs> but it's not that important. It's a trace mineral. Trace minerals are minerals that you need only in small quantities. To be considered a trace mineral, the recommended intake is generally less than 20 milligrams per day. So what's boron's role in menopause? It's one of five minerals that are important to bone health. And boron expect, affects the way your body handles the other minerals that benefit your bones. Another thing boron does is increase your estrogen levels. So boron is a helper for your bone quality and your bone quantity. Conveniently, calcium is next. Unlike boron, you've probably heard a lot about calcium. The problem is that most of what you've heard about calcium is incorrect. As great as calcium is, it gets a lot of women into trouble when it comes to menopause. Here's why. Calcium is very important for your bones, but it's only good for one thing, bone quality. Bone quality refers to how strong your bone is. The trouble lies in confusing bone quality with bone quantity. Osteoporosis is a decrease in bone quantity, not bone quality. So most women think they can prevent osteoporosis by taking calcium, and that's not true. If you take calcium, it will make your bones stronger, but it will not keep you from losing bone. You can lose strong bone just as easily as you can lose weak bone. As a menopausal woman, you need 1,500 milligrams of calcium per day, but your body cannot absorb all 1,500 milligrams at once. So you need to take 500 milligrams in the morning, 500 milligrams at midday, and 500 milligrams at night. Another major role for calcium is in preventing a heart attack. For your heart, you need calcium in the amount of 1,200 milligrams daily. So the dosages for your bones and your heart are pretty similar. In your heart, calcium works with magnesium to regulate the electrical activity of your heart. And the best sources of calcium are da 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 da, green, leafy, vegetables. Most women fail to get adequate quantities of calcium from their diets, especially those who are under the delusion that dairy products contain a lot of calcium. Dairy products contain a lot of fat, not calcium. Do not use any dairy product as a source of calcium. Either eat green leafy vegetables or take some kind of calcium supplement. Calcium has other roles in manage management of your menopause too. It is a benefit in reducing joint stiffness and joint pain, reducing your mood swings, and reducing urinary incontinence. 
Now for copper. Copper is a trace mineral. It plays a minor role in evening out your moods and in improving your bone health. That's all. Next is magnesium. Now magnesium has many roles. The two most important involve your heart and your bones. Now I just told you that calcium is important for your heart. Well, calcium's partner is magnesium. The two work together. And the proportion of calcium to magnesium is very important. For your heart, you need a calcium to magnesium ratio of one to one or two to one, preferably two to one. And you can even get away with a three to one ratio. You need 1,200 milligrams per day of calcium for your heart, and you need 400 to 1,000 milligrams per day of magnesium for your heart. And the great thing is that this is the same ratio you need for your bones. Magnesium improves your bone structure. So like calcium, magnesium is not about bone quantity. It's about bone quality. And the other part of your body that benefits from magnesium is your brain. It helps prevent Alzheimer's disease. But your brain uses magnesium in combination with vitamin B6 and zinc. If you take enough magnesium for your heart and bones, you'll, be definitely, you'll definitely have enough to benefit your brain too. And lastly, magnesium plays a small role in settling down your menopausal moods. <laughs> what about manganese? Now this is another trace mineral, and it plays a small role in benefiting your bones. But it's such a small role that I'll say nothing more about it. Moving on to phosphorus. How much do you know about phosphorus? See if you can answer this question. Which of the following is true about phosphorus? A. Phosphorus fights forgetfulness. B. Phosphorus is phenomenal for fixing fatigue. C. Phosphorus is phooey. It's a phony failure in terms of benefits. D. Phosphorus focuses on bone formation. Which is it? <laughs> it's C. Phosphorus is phooey. That's what I want you to remember. So I don't have a demo for phooey phosphorus. Phosphorus is something you need to limit, not increase. The problem with phosphorus is that you get too much of it in all the fast, processed junk food that's, well, everywhere. One of the biggest sources of too much phosphorus is soft drinks. Most people consume about twice as much phosphorus as they should. So phooey on phosphorus! Next, we have potassium. Now you need potassium for your heart. And potassium's partner is sodium, which we'll get to momentarily. Most people get too much sodium and not enough potassium. The proper ratio of potassium to sodium is 5 to 1. Potassium is precious. Sodium is sad. <laughs> you can get the potassium you need from fruits and veggies. And now you understand why most people don't get enough potassium. It's because they don't eat enough fruits and veggies. <laughs> now, before we get to sodium, in keeping with alphabetical order, let me just mention two other minerals. First, there's selenium. And selenium has one benefit for your menopause. It makes you less forgetful. And the other mineral is silicon. And it's another of the trace minerals for bone health. Quality of bone, that is. And now we can dwell on sodium. Now sodium has one big benefit. It helps prevent a heart attack. But only if you don't get too much. And most people get way too much sodium. A few moments ago, I told you that the desired ratio of potassium to sodium is 5 to 1. 
but most people get a ratio of one to two. That is very, very distorted. And do you know why it's so distorted? See if you can answer this question. Excess sodium is mostly due to A, eating too much citrus fruit, B, eating too much cheese, C, eating too much processed food, or D, drinking too much soda pop. Do you know? The answer is C again. Processed food is full of sodium. Processed food includes fast food, restaurant food, packaged food, junk food, snack food, airplane food, everything except fresh food. And of course, if you add salt to your food from a salt shaker, that can give you too much sodium too. But the biggest culprit is processed food. But if you actually got potassium and sodium in the proper 5 to 1 ratio, it would help prevent a heart attack or stroke. So it's worth it to lighten up on the sodium. And our last mineral is zinc. Now this is another trace mineral. And while it's only a trace mineral, it has tremendous benefits. It helps with all sorts of things. It's beneficial for the quality of your bones, just like all the other trace minerals. And it's beneficial for your brain in helping to avoid Alzheimer's. But it also helps manage urinary incontinence, forgetfulness, hair loss, and acne. So there you have it, all the minerals that can help with menopause management. Of course, I've made you a chart. There's a link for the chart just below this video screen and on the YouTube video page of my website. Just go to menopausetaylor.me. So here's the chart. If you examine this chart, you'll see that the greatest benefit of the minerals is for your bone quality. And the mineral that has the greatest number of benefits is zinc. But the most important mineral is calcium. And the second most important mineral is magnesium. And phosphorus is fooey, so you don't need to take phosphorus. I think consolidating all the minerals into one video is helpful so that you can see how they compare in terms of importance. So that's it for today. Next week, we'll talk about the dietary supplements that are useful in managing your menopause. That'll be all the things that are not botanicals, herbs, vitamins, or minerals. And believe it or not, it constitutes a large category of options. So I'll see you then. Follow me in the meantime on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to my channel. Go to my website, menopausetaylor.me. Sign up for a seminar. Re register for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. I'm here to help you in any way I can. Bye.